Now, uh, this will be my third attempt at making this video and uh, if you've seen my other videos I'm sure you're aware that I'm not a, uh, an expert at it. Um, so let's hope that it goes okay this time. Um, I had a couple of inquiries uh, about um, a modification that I did to the uh, TAG top slide and the anchoring of that top slide to the cross slide. Um, the original base of the top slide from from TAG um, is this little piece here um, and the reason that it's like that is it's uh, first off it's an extrusion uh, with a little bit of machining done on it I, I'm sure um, uh, it's very thin and the reason for that is because when it's sitting on top of the uh, or when it's sitting on top of the, cr the cross slide um, the top surface of the table is um, almost in line with the center line of the headstock and um, so the only way that you can machine with the original top slide is to clamp a tool bit on the top surface of the table of the of the slide um, because there's not uh, sufficient room to put anything down in the side or on the front. Um, I think Shearline uh, has uh, quite a nice uh, top slide, um, uh, slightly better than than this. But one of the problems with the with the with the top slide is the flimsy little anchoring system that they have with a little tiny Allen Allen screw that you have to try and feed up from this end and try and find the 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 screw and then as you screw it together it pulls two little tiny little um, uh, dovetail uh, like T-slots um, together and they they grip around here to stabilize the top slide and stop it from moving but the trouble is that it's so flimsy um, it's very easy to um, damage this area here in inside so um, I never actually tried it but I had read that um, in some reports that um, uh, some users of the TAG top slide had um, come up with some features like placing um, washers, steel washers or, or pads or um, or clamp uh, clamping blocks uh, alongside the the each side of the uh, the base plate here um, uh, to stop it from moving when they were putting a cut on and I mean I can't say that it does or it doesn't but that's what I read so um, I had worked on for the part for the last 20 years of my um, my working life um, I worked on uh, daily on HLV Hardinge uh, tool room lathes and um, uh, they've got some beautiful features on there one of the features is the location of the top slide on the cross slide and all it is is um, a floating pin that's all loose in the cross slide um, it goes in from underneath the cross slide this is on the hardinge underneath and it has a head on it but it's it's it floats and uh, so it doesn't have any uh, accuracy or effect on the accuracy of the top slide or where you position it but what they did was they they inlaid a steel ring that was raised up 
and uh, it located in a corresponding uh, uh, groove in the um, uh, uh, oh, sorry it was a groove in the top slide and uh, there was a ring in the in in sorry there was a there was a groove uh, a circular groove in the cross slide of the hard inch and a, a, a hardened a ring that was raised that fitted in the circle so so that was the accuracy that's where you, the accuracy came from when swinging the top slide um, but the pin was um, just a short little pin that came up from underneath the cross slide and it had a hole in it um, much larger than this obviously I scaled this one down um, but it has a hole in it and all it all it um, all it has is a, a, a little um, eccentric pin and um, uh, I managed to get dimensions from the original and then I scaled it down to mm, I think it was 0.8 or 750 something like that and um, I came up with a, a 25 thou eccentric on the pin and uh, what it does is the, the, the eccentric it goes into the hole and obviously I mean you can see it's all loose in there but as you turn it round it it pulls the the uh, floating uh, plug or pin or whatever you want to call it it pulls it up and in in that way in pulling it up it pulls the base of the top slide down tight onto the cross slide it's a it's a it's a nice feature it's, it works really really well so um, that's what I decided that I was going to try and do so I started off with um, making a new block a new base and um, uh, uh, I, I made it a quarter of an inch thicker because uh, obviously this pin is too it's too big in diameter to do anything with this so I, I made a new one and I made it uh, a quarter of an inch uh, thicker and that allowed me to get the eccentric pin in there and uh, if you can see um, the pin goes right the way through and then it comes up and then it goes down you know uh, it's a it's a basic um, uh, feature just a, just basic but it's it's very effective um, so um, that's what I did to modify this flimsy little thing that they that they produce um, so now the problem was that increasing this block by a quarter of an inch it raised the top surface of this table the top slide up a quarter of an inch higher now that meant that I could no longer put a tool bit on the top surface there and clamp it to do any machining um, so um, that gave me another uh, uh, feature that I had to come up with and uh, what I what I did was um, I decided to use the front face of the of the table of the top slide um, and um, uh, make some kind of a, a setup there where I could maybe not actually incorporate a um, I'm looking at the camera because it keeps on cutting out on me um, yeah um, uh, in, I, I wanted to be able to use tool bits on the top slide without having to put shims under so I decided that a nice um, uh, adjustable uh, holder tool bit holder um, would be nice and that's when I came up with this idea of putting a plate a dovetailed a male dovetail uh, block um, if you can see it um, it's a uh, it's not very large um, 
it's in it's in keeping with the rest of the unit. Um, what I did was I I used um, taper dowels uh, to locate it because um, uh, if I ever needed to get it off and I used straight dowels, I was going to have a, a bit of a job. So I decided taper dowels was the way to go, and so I I uh, I built it around uh, two tapered dowels and uh, one clamping that's that's all that was required one clamping that uh, screw and um, uh, then uh, uh, after thinking about it a while I thought hmm I better make sure I can get this thing off uh, without banging it or tapping it uh, and uh, marking it so um, I drilled a little hole and threaded it down here and I have a little set screw that comes that comes through there and that's ejects or, or releases the the um, unit away from the um, uh, from the front face and the taper dowels of course allow it to just come out easy so uh, I'll put that back together again now because um, I've explained that now I located this male dovetail fixture uh, as close as I could because I wanted to make it strong I'm, I'm, I placed it um, uh, as close as I could to the um, the dovetails of the base um, and what I did was I put some shims underneath uh, 5 thou shims just so that I had clearance there and there and uh, it's worked out very well um,